Because this topic comes up so often, I wanted to talk about why range figures on some Teslas appear to be a little bit less realistic than range figures on other EVs. It's not Tesla's fault necessarily. They're not gaming the system, although they are definitely working by a different set of rules than say Kia or Hyundai or Ford when they range test their electric cars. It all has to do with window sticker calculations. Ostensibly, there is now a five cycle EPA test for determining fuel efficiency and range on any vehicle out there. This combines the original city and highway cycles with some additional cycles that were meant to replicate more real world conditions. How exactly they impact the number depends on how the calculations are done and how the test cycles are done. Manufacturers like Tesla can elect to do the entire suite of five test cycles or a manufacturer can elect to run just the city and the highway test cycles, and then they can use a calculated value to get at the final result for the window sticker. If you're on the full suite of five test cycles, there's still some math that goes on for a calculated reduction to the number that is yielded by the testing to be put on the window sticker, but generally it ends up being a bit more advantageous. Here's how it goes. A car manufacturer can run the city test and then the highway test, then they reduce the result by 30%, that's the number that goes on the window. Or a manufacturer like Tesla can run all five cycles, do their own little calculations, and then on a vehicle like a Model 3 or a Model S, the reduction could end up being more like 23 or 24% instead of 30%. That gives you a bigger number on the window. Also, manufacturers can elect to derate the window sticker if they think that's gonna be a bit more appropriate, more in line with customer expectations. For instance, the average Porsche Taycan has eight miles of range, docked from the window sticker simply because Porsche wanted to. So in reality, the big problem here is that even though a lot of us think that this is a standardized test, in fact, you can take the test multiple different ways and receive definitely different results on that window sticker based on how you've completed the test. You should also know about the test cycle. So in addition to the city and highway test cycle, there is a high speed test cycle that's only eight miles long. It has a maximum speed of 80 miles an hour, but an average speed of 48 miles an hour. There's also an air conditioning test because on the high speed test, city and highway test, no air conditioning, no heater use on those. There's an air conditioning test loop that reaches a top speed of 55 miles an hour, but only an average speed of 21 miles an hour. It's only 3.6 miles long and has uh, temperatures ambient of 95 degrees. Then there is a cold test cycle. The heater is on, including in electric vehicles. So heat pump equipped electric vehicles like this Model S will definitely outperform in that cycle versus one that did not have one. That is an 11 mile test loop with an average speed of 21 miles an hour and a maximum speed of 56 miles an hour. As you'd expect with a cold test cycle that is done at a temperature just below freezing. For me, the ultimate problem here is that we don't have one set standard. This is not truly a standardized test. So you could get a Tesla that had a range of 300 miles on the window sticker and a competitor with 270 miles of range on the window sticker and the 270 mile range vehicle could actually exceed the range of the 300 mile rated vehicle on the exact same drive driving back to back. And that is definitely something that I have proved before in our range test between a Ford Mustang Mach-E and a Tesla Model Y. The Model Y was certainly more efficient, but it did not meet its EPA range numbers, whereas the Ford was awfully close. Now, I personally don't see this as a direct ding at Tesla because they're simply playing the game that they're allowed to play by the EPA. Personally, I blame the EPA. I think that the EPA should have just one set of standards for every EV out there. So that way we can make those direct comparisons, window sticker to window sticker. So unfortunately, until we see that reality, keep that in mind when you're comparing Teslas or Audis or some other EV manufacturers that may start adopting this same test methodology to another vehicle that doesn't. Thanks for watching. Be sure and hit that subscribe button down there so you can be updated on all of my latest content, including a full review of this Tesla Model S and its complete range test as well. I'll see all of you later.